love it.
Bible says for us to never cease to pray. It says for us to continuously be in prayer. Another translation is pray without ceasing. Amen. And this morning we're going to have prayer time. And this is so important. How do you learn the value of prayer? You know, how do you learn? Sometimes isn't it because the prayer is answered and you realize God hears and answers prayer? Amen. You know, today I want you to pray with someone. And I want you to pray God's blessings on them. And you may say, well, I don't know what they want. You know, the blessings of the Lord So generous and so wonderful, and they don't add sorrow. Someone told me that they wanted some money, and they asked God, I don't want it to come to an inheritance. That means a relative will die, so I'm scared to ask God. You know, the blessings of the Lord, how does that scripture go? They make what? They make you rich, but it adds no sorrow. We need to understand the character of God. He's not going to bless you with something <clears throat> and, and also take away from you, amen, something that you vitally desire and need. So with blessings, I will bless you, said the Lord. I want you to bless three people. And I want you to try to do it in three sentences each so we can get finished in six minutes. All right? Scripture will tell you that you're the head and not the tail. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
today because we have a mighty king. He's mighty. And he's got something special just for you. It's not happenstance that you're here this morning. God has a word for you. 
in song, in deed, in a hug. He's got something special for you because he loves you. We're so glad to have you. Please know it is our sincere prayer that you not leave out of those doors in which the same way you came. You're going to hear something from the Lord today because he loves you. Oh, oh, ooh, mm. ooh. He's got something tasty, tasty, just for you. Woo, tasty. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. His mercy endured forever. There's no end to his love and his mercy. We welcome you, we welcome you. Please don't let this be your last time. It's your first time, but don't let it be your last. You're welcome whenever you come in these doors. Please remain standing. We want to serenade you.
worship him as long as I'm breathing. from us. We want to act like the devil doesn't appeal to you. But the Bible says if you resist him, you'll flee. And that's part of resistance, getting some help, you know, in the areas that we need. So he went to the counselor and he said, uh, you know, there's a, a woman at the church and I believe it's a satanic assignment. I know it and how she appeals to me. And Oh my goodness. He said that it's just it's awful, he said, and I, I'm finding myself weakening it. At first she was texting, and then she stopped by the office, and, and one thing after another, he said, it's, it's not good, it's not God. He said, and I, 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 but I don't know how to get out of the grip of it. And the counselor said, the next concept she makes, worship. He said, what do you mean? He said his wife was out of town. How many of you know that the enemy knows circumstances? Oh, yes, oh, yes. She called at 2 in the morning. Bishop, what you doing? He said, I'm worshiping. He said, you want to put a little flair to it? He said, I'm doing that now. How y'all up with Santa? He said, I got a little surprise for you. He said, he put the phone on the speaker. They begin to walk around in his room. Praise him, God. Weapon, weapon. Speaking in tongues. Saying, Lord, you're wonderful. I, I love you, Lord. I love you. He said on the phone, he heard shrieks. Stop it! Stop it! Don't call his name! Demons. Yeah. 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 The more he praised God and exalted the Lord, the more those demons screamed. 
they were tormented by the name of Jesus. He said then he got louder and louder. He said that his flesh was then under control, under subjection. You know, this is why the Lord said if we focus on him, the enemy brings distractions and wants you to get all involved in the distraction. Amen. Amen. And I thought about that when we were singing this song. As long as you're breathing, that means every single minute of the day, all opportunities. Worship Him. And all the stuff that the devil wants to do is going to be thwarted. Do you think that woman stayed in the middle of that praise, screaming and howling, and then she just hung up and she never called back and said that was five years ago? <laughs> Worship. I just wonder, I thought you'd like that little morsel. Weapons cover our warfare. Hallelujah. God, that was a good morsel. God's wisdom. He's got an answer for everything. Well, you're in for another treat. This morning we are celebrating Black History Month. And this is our third week of celebration. Um, I would like for the presenters to come up, please, to the stage. We will start with Pat Standifer. Then we'll have presentations from Lydia Threadgill and Karen Rice. Next will be Pastors Carlos and Joan Lewis. And last but not least, Minister Thaddeus Edwards.
Psalm 34, 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Amen. Eleventh, eighteen eighty-seven. 
I'm, thank God we, we don't always have to climb stairs anymore. <laughs> you were right, there are a lot of very interesting things in here. I'm going home and see what else I can discover. Me too. There's so many black inventors who made useful everyday tools. Some are life saving. And we didn't even know about them. But now we do. Wow. How time passed. Let's get out of here. Well, I'm glad we were able to spend some time together. Praise God. <laughs> Throughout every nation. 
and when all those colors are blended well, you become my greatest creation. Your hair is the texture of lamb's wool. Such a humble little creature is he. I am the shepherd who watches over them. I am the one who will watch over thee. You are the color of midnight sky. I put the stars glitter in your eyes. There's a simple, I'm sorry, there's a smile hidden behind your pain. That's the reason your cheeks are high. You are the color of dark clouds formed when I send my strongest weather. I made your lips full so when you kiss the one you love, they will remember. <laughs> your stature is strong, your bone structure thick to withstand the burdens of time. The reflection you see in the mirror, the image that looks back at you, is mine. The author, Runet Nia Ebo, Psalm 139 14 declares I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well yes. now we understand why God made us black. Yeah. You know they used to say the black and the bear the sweet of the juice. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, in the 1940s, Langston Hughes established a character in his short story writings named Jesse B. Simple. Uh -oh. I was going to say Jesse May Mucho, but it's Jesse B. Simple. <laughs> A loving name, Jesse Bay Mucha, that my wife gave Jesse. <laughs> um, through these short stories, he used this character to represent the black man of his times. It started as a weekly column in the Negro newspaper, the Chicago Defender. Now, during the 1940s, the black man was still experiencing oppression, segregation from the whites in America. The civil rights movement had not yet taken place so blacks were still considered less than a citizen. Blacks in America could not vote yet, nor could they eat in the same restaurants as whites, or even get a job other than a servant in a white business or establishment. Therefore, with the type of climate that the society of the 1940s had, many of the black authors coming out of the Harlem Renaissance, especially Langston Hughes, were considered radicals. But we know one person that was the greatest man on this earth that was considered radical, and that's Jesus Christ. So, this letter is written by Langston Hughes, but it's written by Jesse B. Simple, and it's entitled, Is Brotherhood Colored? Simple writes, Dr. Butts. Dear Dr. Butts, I seen last week in the colored papers where you had written an article for the New York Times magazine part section of the paper in which you say that in spite of all, America is still the greatest country in the world for the Negro race. And democracy is the greatest kind of government for all. But it would be better if all deliberate speed picked up a little bit. America is great, you say, but, you continue, it would be better if the Mississippi pattern was not patented in so many other parts of the South also. And you but this, and but that, and but the other 14 pages more. Once you get started writing, all the latter part of your article is hanging on to your butt. <laughs> you start off talking about how great American democracy is, then you butt it all over the place. In fact, the butt end of your seesaw is so far down on the ground, I do not believe the other end can ever pull it up. <laughs> so me, myself, I would not write no article for no New York Times 
if I had put in so many butts. But I reckon maybe you come by it naturally though, that being the name, dear Dr. Butts. <coughs> I hear tell you are a race leader, but I do not know who you lead because I have never heard telling you before and I have not laid eyes on you in all this shuffle about integration. But if you are leading me, make me know it. Because I do not read the New York Times very often, <laughs> lest, I find, lest I happen to pick up a copy blowing around in the subway. So I did not know you were my leader. But since you are my leader, lead on and see if I will follow behind your butt. <laughs> because there's more behind that butt than there is in front of me. Oh, Dr. Butts, I'm glad to read that you read an article in the New York Times, but also sometimes I wish you would write one in the colored papers and let me know how to get out from behind all these butts that are staring me in the face. I know America is a great country, but, and it is that but that has been keeping me where I is all these years. I can't get over it, I can't get under it, and I can't get around it. So what am I supposed to do? If you are leading me, let me see. Because we have too many colored leaders now that nobody knows until they get from the white papers to the colored papers, and from the colored papers to me, who has never seen hair nor hide of you. Dear Dr. Butts, are you hiding from me and leading me too? From the way you write, a man would think my race problem was made out of nothing but butts. But this, but that, and yes, there is Jim Crow in Georgia, but America missed they bombed folks in Alabama, but Hitler gassed the Jews. Mississippi is bad, but Russia is worse. Harlem slums are awful, but compared to the slums in India, Lenox Avenue is paradise. Huh. Dear Dr. Butts, Hitler's dead. I don't live in Russia. India is across the Pacific Ocean, and I do not hope to see paradise no time soon. I am nowhere near some of them foreign countries you are talking about being so bad. I am here. And you know as well as I do, Mississippi is hell. There ain't no butt in the world can make it out different. They tell me when Nazis gas you, you die slow. But when they put a bomb under you like in Birmingham, you don't have time to say your prayers. I don't know nothing about India, but I've been in Washington, D.C. <laughs> and if you think there ain't no slums there, <laughs> Just take your butt up 7th Street late some night and see if you still got it by the time you get to Howard University. Now, I should not have to be telling you these things. You are colored, just like me, to put a butt after all this Jim Crow fly papering around our feet. It's just like telling a hungry man, but Mr. Rockefeller has got plenty to eat. It's just like telling the joker with no overcoat in the wintertime, but you will be hot next summer. That fella is lying to haul off and say, I'm hot now, and bop you up over your head. Are you in your right mind, dear Dr. Butts, or are you just right? Do you really think a new day is dawning? Do you really think the Civil Rights Bill has civilized anything? Do you honest to God think Christians are having a change of heart? I can see you now taking your pen in hand to write. But just last week, the Southern denominations of hellfire salvation resolved to work toward brotherhood. <clears throat> in fact, that is what you already read. <clears throat> Do you think brotherhood means color to them southerners? <clears throat> Do you reckon they will recognize you for a brother, Dr. Butts? Huh. Since you done had your picture taken in the grand ballroom of the Waldorf Astoria, shaking hands at some kind of meeting with 500 white big shots and five Negroes. 
all five of them Negro leaders. So it said underneath the picture. I did not know any of them Negro leaders by sight, neither by name. But since it says in the white papers that they are leaders, I reckon they are. Anyhow, I take my pen in hand to write you this letter to ask you to make yourself clear to me. And when you answer me, do not write no so and so but. I will not take but for an answer. Negroes have been looking at democracy's but too long. But we, what we want to know is how to get rid of that but. Do you dig me, dear Dr. Butts? Sincerely, very truly, Jesse, be simple. <laughs> Proverbs 17, 22 says, A merry heart doth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Thanks be unto God. He causes us always to try. Amen. These are the announcements for the week for February 10th, 2019 inspirational verse. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. 1 Corinthians 13.1. That's the ESV version. Bible study meets Tuesday, February 12th. Anger workshop, 12 to 1 p.m., 6 to 7 p.m. The Sermon on the Mount, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. and 7 to 8 p.m. We will be celebrating Black History Month every Sunday in February. Part two of the annual business meeting is today, immediately following service. Amen. What's that part two of what? Annual business. annual business meeting is today, immediately following service. So don't leave, members. Living Epistles meets Monday, February 11th, that's tomorrow, at 6 p.m. Feet of Fire will meet Wednesday evening, February 13th, 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Psalm Shabbat will meet Thursday evening, February 14th, from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Dunamis, the Holy Spirit class, meets Saturday, February 23rd, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Feet of Fire men's rehearsal will begin on Wednesday, February 27th, at 6.30 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Feet of fire men. Yes. Isn't that something? Amen. We have men with feet of fire. Amen. Amen. Be sure to check out our website at www.lasmc.org. Secure online giving, church services, and events are available from February 2018 to present. You can also get sermons and events from our YouTube channel by doing a YouTube search for Los Angeles Shabbat. Is there anyone celebrating a birthday today or this week? Please stand. <coughs> My mom's birthday is today. Katie Tanner's 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 birthday is today. Katie your birthday this week? The 13th. Amen. Amen. Anyone else that we know? My mother turned 92. And renewed her driver's license on the same day. She renewed her driver's license. Still driving. That's all right. 92 teenage years. Amen. Pastor Johnson. Have a birthday this week. No, no it's next week. Next All of next Sunday. All right. Okay. Well, stand for Sister Tanner. Stand for your mom, Gwen. Somebody else. Who? I'm sorry. Who? I'm sorry. Kyla. Kyla. Kyla.
Kylie is working. All right, somebody stand for Kylie. Your mom? 94 teenage years. Amen. Yeah. Okay, Pastor is standing for her birthday on the 17th.
serve who one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall read. Love our neighbor as thyself. All right. Does everybody have a Bible? All right. Read, please. That you would what? Love our neighbor as thyself. Verse 15 says, But if you divide, bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. I want to go back up to verse 13. But through love, do what? Serve one another. Through love, serve one another. All right. Please look at uh, Galatians 6. Next chapter down. Verse 7. Do you have it? Yes. All right, verse 7. Do not be what? Deceived. Don't be deceived. What? God is not mocked. For what one sows, that will he also what? reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow of well-doing, or doing well, or doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Verse 13, so then as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone and and who and what especially to those who are of the household of faith. Go back to th thirteen, uh, the last sentence in thirteen. But through love, do what? Come on, do you see it? The last sentence in verse 13. But three, I mean, but through what? Love. Love, do what? Serve. Serve who? All right. Sometimes it is, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, sometimes it's very, uh, uh, Interesting how family dynamics go. Sometimes uh, there are families who uh, serve others better than they serve those within the household. Uh, Paul is admonishing the Galatians, don't get that twisted up. Uh, yeah, serve others. However, through love, serve one another. Through love, serve one another. One of the things we know about service is that it is synonymous with the term worship. Uh, worship is a service unto the Lord. And so when by love we serve one another, it changes uh, the attitude uh, of, of the person who is doing the loving. How many of you have ever in your families done things that you really didn't want to do but because you love your family, you made the sacrifice and you did it. And that's all the word is telling us. He's not saying feel like it. He just said, out of love, serve one another. And so the question becomes, how can I be of service to you? Now, many people won't answer that question because they know they're not willing to do whatever somebody would say. And then many times folks are afraid that other folks are off. And so, you know, they don't want to acquiesce to uh, necessarily do what they may ask to do. Tell somebody, in addition to serving, you also have the privilege of 
of saying no. So God is not calling us to slavery. He is calling us to servitude. There's a difference. And he's telling us to serve one another out of love, not out of obligation. There's a difference. It has to do with our attitude. It has to do with our motivation. All right. Look at Ephesians chapter 1. Tell somebody I'm blessed to be a blessing. There was a sacrifice made so that we could implement the works of God through the words of God. And it is important that we are imitators of Christ and that we follow the same example given to us by Jesus. And what we see in scripture borne out through Jesus himself when he was facing the purpose for which he came. How many of you know <clears throat> that Jesus was not surprised by the Romans capturing him and then he coming to the place of Golgotha. He was not surprised. Tell somebody he was not taken by surprise. In fact, you said that's the purpose for which I came. He knew that he came to redeem mankind. He knew that. That was his purpose. He knew it. However, we find that in the Garden of Gethsemane, while he's in prayer with some of the, the disciples, we find him lamenting in his humanity and saying to the Father, let this cup, let this assignment, if you will, yeah. let this project Pass from me. I know it's why I came, but uh, I ain't feeling it right now. There are things that sometimes take us by surprise, and that at other times there are things that we don't expect to have the results from what we've sown. Or the consequences. And sometimes we'll implore, and implore uh, that the Lord will take this thing, dismiss it. Tell somebody he can. He can. And he will. And he will. But not always does the Lord take us up out of consequences. Okay. However, we are to be comforted by understanding that he said that even though we go through those consequences, he'll never leave you or forsake you. Yeah. But in his dying or in his trial time before death, Jesus got to a point where he began to lament, let this cup pass from me. He said it three times as uh, recorded in the Gospels. And not one time did God say, okay, I'm going to hold it up. Every assignment you have does not necessarily end with flowers. Amen. Or with a roaring applause. Or with salutations. You go, you go, you get it. No. Life has its challenges. They are built in. Oftentimes, the challenges come 
as we uh, are living life. It's very interesting how sometimes uh, when we're dealing with our consequences for whatever we've sown, uh, we'll call on the Lord and we want him to help right now, but when we're making the decision to do whatever it is you did, did you ask him, did you inquire of him? Many times we, we do it prayerlessly. Amen. And yet God in his gracious mercy and his grace will often cause things not to come out the way you planned or designed them. Can somebody say thank you, Jesus? Thank you. I'm sure that in your life there have been things that you've sown for uh, that the Lord, through his grace, gave you a little wiggle room. There are things based on what we've sown that we shouldn't be present today. It is often, it's often, unfortunately, that we don't even think about that until it's somebody else. And they, they deserve that. How many times have you talked about what somebody deserved in a negative light? Mm. Mercy. Mercy. Mm. So as we're learning to serve one another, what we might learn to do, it is essential that we learn to do is you might want to check your opinions and put them under your feet. Because the reality of the word is that you reap what you sow. And we read that. What, whatever. I find that many times people sow things that they don't want to receive. Can't stand. When we had school, I would often put the troublemakers in charge if I had to leave out for a minute. Amen. <laughs> because I found that for the most part, they were going to be unbiased. And they were going to check what everybody else did. <laughs> and they may have been the most talkative. They may have been the most uh, adventurous, I'll just say it like that. But if they were put in charge, and when they were put in charge, guess what? They allowed no talking. They allowed no adventure. That's right. None. And your name would go on the board. As instructed, even if you said, <clears throat> You're just clearing your throat, you haven't said a word. And they would expect that whatever the designated discipline was, that it would be carried out, even in their presence. <laughs> they wanted to make sure that these folks were going to get their just due. Now, when it came to them, it's a different story. How many of us fit that bill or that ticket? No, you don't have to raise your hand. That's a rhetorical question. Just think about it. Because what I know, if I ask you to raise your hand, all y'all ain't going to raise your hand. Who it applies to, so ain't going to need a line. I mean, you know. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. In him we have redemption through his blood. 
the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him things in heaven things on earth in him tell somebody in him I have redemption through his blood so that the sentence that I should have to pay I don't because I have redemption through his blood the blood of Jesus has exonerated all of our indebtedness now, it would be advisable for us to live as the redeemed. But many times we go back under the auction block, if you will, by our will, by our choices, and we think that there's going to be redemption. It's already been done. Tell somebody it's already been done. Already done. He's, he's not re-redeeming. There's no such thing. He's already redeemed you. So when you go under, back to the auction block, that's a choice you made. What you need to do is step down off of the auction block and return to the redemption factor that covers you. What is it that you need to step down from? What is the auction block that you have returned to? Just think about it. I know the Holy Ghost is revealing it to you because He told me He was going to do that. Some of you may have more than one. But I want you to think about one. For in Him we have redemption through His blood. That is the state that is, uh, that is the condition rather within which you uh, are living. The forgiveness of our trespasses. I think King James says of our sins. And he has given it to us graciously. So I want you to get that auction block in mind now. And when you get it, stand up. Just one. You may have a lot of them, but just get one. There's no need for redemption if there is no auction block or if there is no uh, status or state of bondage or enslavement. Can you repeat the request, Pastor? I'm sorry? Repeat what we're standing for. Uh, okay, what you're standing for is when the Lord shows you what an auction block is in your life. That they want to put up. Stand. Auction block. Place of bondage. Mm. Place of enslavement. It is a place that has you bound. It could be addictions. It could be your mouth. It could be your thoughts. It could be your motivations. It could be anything that has you bound so that you're not uh, living out the redemptive work of Christ. What area is it in your life that does not reflect the, redemption, the, the redemptive work of Christ. Tell somebody, don't be afraid to look at it. Don't be afraid to look at it.
because freedom comes as we identify and then renounce. You can't renounce what you don't identify. And we can walk in denial and things will continue to hold us captive if we don't directly deal with them. We have redemption through his blood. The blood has already been shed once and for all. However, there are times and places in our life where we don't live in that redemptive state. And we allow various things to bind us and hinder us in reflecting that redemption. See yourself standing on an auction block. Bethel Music puts out a song or put out a song that says, I'm no longer a slave to sin, uh, to fear. I am a child of God. Sometimes fear holds us afast to those auction blocks. And then guilt and shame won't let us step down. Say shame be gone. Shame be gone. I want you now to see yourself stepping down off of the auction board. Whatever its name. Step down in the name of Jesus. Now repeat after me, Father. Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace. I volitionally, I volitionally that means on purpose, intentional, step down, step down from the bondage of, from the bondage of you fill in the blank. blank. You can do it mm -hmm. under your breath, whatever, whatever, however, it be, but you need to pronounce it. In the name of Jesus. And I'll walk away, see yourself walking away from it. In the name of Jesus. Now see you going to Calvary. Where redemption has already been purchased for you. And I choose to live under your redemptive banner. In the name of Jesus. I make this exchange. And I ask you to forgive me. And to be Lord. Over this area. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 You may sit down. You may not know this song, but it's just, just, just the chorus. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Sing it again. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am. wants to put a little crip in your step, a little crook in your step, or cause you to misstep, or cause you to forget. You are the redeemed of the Lord. Your redemption was purchased by the blood of Jesus. You don't need to bleed anymore. It's already been paid for. You don't
don't have to walk in fear, guilt, and shame. You are a child of God. Come on, let's sing it again. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. I am a child of God. Thank you, Lord, that we will walk in the reality and in the truth. That we belong to you. We've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Gracing us to love well. And to serve one another by love or through love. Thank you, Lord, that it is the entrance of your word that gives light, Lord. But that we will not just be hearers of your word, but we will be doers thereof. Not in some kind of manipulative way, but out of a pure heart. With our only purpose and desire being pleasing you and being like you. Help us to have pure motives, God. Pure intentions. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And we give you glory. We give you honor. And we say thank you for your redemption. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your has said, your so great love for us that's everlasting. It goes from everlasting to everlasting. Thank you, Lord, that we receive and accept that love and grace. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those in favor say amen. amen. All right, I should say in agreement. Um, okay, amen. So is there anyone, ask someone next to you, have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? All right, don't assume that just because they're sitting in this seat that they have received the Lord as, your, as their Lord and Savior. All right. Ask them, have they been baptized in water in the name of the Lord Jesus? Ask them, have they received the Holy Spirit with the New Testament evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of the Lord gives the language? All right. Ask them, do they have a church home? They're not sure, you might want to just leave it alone. Anyway, okay. All right. Were there any spiritual needs? All right. Let's prepare to worship the Lord with the giving of our tithes and offerings. Raise your hand if you need an envelope. Remember, part two of the business meeting will uh, convene as soon as we are completed with receiving our offering tithes. Raise your hand if you need an envelope. Brothers and sisters, please write legibly.
Bring the Lord your tithes and offerings. God is faithful. Amen. All right, have all given who desire to give. We'll wait just a few more minutes for those who are making transactions. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lord. As I was awake this week, um, the song, um, I Shall Not Be Moved, became very real. Just like a tree planted by the water. I shall not be moved. I saw a stream or a creek turn into a river. land that surrounded it was washed away and when it began to recede or to stop the water kept running but you could see where the earth had been moved by the water and all you saw were the roots of the trees and then some of the trees that had been swept down. But in the camp where we were, trees burned all around. And not one structure was burned. Mud swept all around us. But none of us were harmed. The Lord is an awesome God. What we need to know is that he does not change. So perhaps we need to change our expectations and let them only be of him. He only is our rock and our stability. Amen. He alone. Amen. So I shall not, I shall not be moved.
Thank you that the devourer is rebuked for the sake of those who have tied. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you are a great provider. Thank you, you are Jehovah Jireh. You supply our needs. Thank you, Lord, that you are Jehovah Rapha. You are our healer. We give you glory, Lord, that as we have given, we receive multitudinal blessings. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you that doors are open that no man can close and that doors are closed that no man can open. You know exactly what we have need of and we say thank you for meeting the needs. Thank you for being a God of more than enough. And we give you glory, Lord. We give you honor. We give you praise. We bless your name. Now thank you, Lord, that we receive checks in the mail. In Jesus' name, lost money's found. In the name of the Lord Jesus, increasing on every hand in Jesus' name. Prophets, Lord, we thank you for jobs. We thank you for raises on those jobs, Lord. We thank you for increased benefits in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you shower upon us blessings, blessings. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you know exactly what everyone needs in this place. So we thank you that you meet every need. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. We thank you that our brothers and sisters uh, who were affected by the um, federal shutdown, that they are being replenished. We give you glory and honor, Lord God, that you keep them, you sustain them, continue to sustain them. In Jesus' name, and we bless your name. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. amen. All right, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace. Members, come toward the front. <laughs> 